All right, so we are live. Welcome everyone. My name is Andy Mandel. I'm a broker associate with Remax Advisors. And today we're going over this week in real estate. Uh, so we're gonna go over everything that happened this week in the real estate market. Uh, for the purposes of this video, we're talking about South Palm Beach County and Northwest Broward County. So the areas that we specialize in, Boca Raton, Parkland, Coral Springs, Coconut Creek, Margate and Tamarack. So Northwest Broward, South Palm Beach County. We're only talking about single family homes and we're not talking about 55 and over neighborhoods or country clubs. Those are a separate market, um, but we specialize in single family homes for all ages in, in those areas. So let's go over what happened in the real estate market this week. Let me bring up my screen share. So in our market this week, we had 110 new listings hit the market. That's new properties coming to market. At the same time, we had 96 homes that are on the market have price reductions. So this is a little bit high, but it's not uncommon. A lot of times sellers put their home on the market and they wanna shoot for a, a top, top price. And then once they realize that it may not be realistic or they're not getting that in the time frame that they need to move, they start to come back down. So that number is higher than uh, what we normally see but it's nothing crazy. Uh, backup and pending. So those are the two, that's how many homes are coming off the market. So we've had 144 homes go under contract within the last week. So 110 new listings, 144 coming off the market. So you know, we are still seeing homes go under contract. That's a really good thing. The market is still moving. We had 105 sales actually close. So really what that means is that 105 properties about 30 to 60 days ago, most likely, went under contract and now they closed. That's a good thing. Uh, deals are still closing. People are getting to the finish line and getting to the closing table. And then off the market. So we've had 91 homes come off the market, uh, but not because they sold or went under contract. So as you see here, 22, proper, 22 listings were canceled. That means that the agent and the seller uh, agreed to take it off the market. I won't bore you with the technicalities of the different statuses, but 91 total homes came off the market and didn't sell. Um, so a lot of sellers are putting the pause button on things if they're not getting the results that they want. It's obviously a crazy time in, in you know, the world and in the real estate market. And a lot of people don't want strangers coming into their house, especially if they're living in the property. So we are seeing an above average number of homes you know, not sell and come off the market. So let's talk about the, the stats in general. In the month of April, so those were all for last week, um, but let's talk about the month of April as a whole. Number of new listings hitting the market in the areas that we specialize in, down 56%. So year over year, we're seeing a ton of people who normally would be selling around this time say, you know, we don't want people in our house and that's obviously understandable. You know, it's a stressful process to begin with. You don't need the added stress of worrying about who's coming into your house at this point. So a lot of people are choosing not to list their homes right now. But 57%, uh, so there's a 57% reduction in new pending sales. So real estate is based on supply and demand for that's how we price real estate. So if supply is going down 56%, but so is demand, then there should be an equilibrium and we should not be seeing a, a huge amount of price reductions. You know, they're going down in basically the same percentage. So fewer sellers and fewer buyers should lead to prices staying relatively flat. So we probably won't be seeing a huge increase in prices this year, but you know, if supply was going way up and demand was going down, then we would see, you know, price go down. But if they're both going down at the same level, we should not see a huge downward turn in prices, just a downward turn in the number of, of new closed sales, which is definitely where we're trending. So as far as months of inventory, so a buyer's market is anything really five months or less in, uh, of inventory. A seller's market is really six months or more. So what this means, if no more homes were to come on the market at the current pace of sales, how long would it take for all of the homes that are on the market to sell? So in Boca, it was 3.82 months, Parkland 4.61 months, Coral Springs it is the exception to the rule. We're seeing 1.85 months of inventory. So it is still very much a seller's market in Coral Springs. There's really not a lot of listings to choose from. 
Parkland is getting pretty close to a buyer's market, or at least a neutral market, uh, where the number of homes matches exactly the number of buyers who are looking in there. I'm seeing these numbers in Parkland and Boca tick up a little bit. Um, that's to be expected. Things are taking a little bit longer to sell, so the homes are sitting longer, and you should see the months of inventory tick up just a little bit. But this is definitely something that we're tracking. So in the month of April, where we saw, we've been starting to see a huge, an increase in the number of showings again. So showing time is the company that we as realtors use to schedule our showings. So if you look here at the graph, what we saw was in the middle of March, kind of when this all started to break out, we saw a huge decline in the number of showings. It was down to a little over 60% year over year. So there was 60% fewer showings uh, year over year in the beginning of April. But as you can see, starting in the middle of the month, it has gone up. So we're still down on the number of showings. There's fewer people out there looking to buy houses right now with everything going on, but it's definitely on an upward trend. So people are getting a little bit more comfortable with everything going on. Realtors are getting more comfortable with how to do virtual showings and stuff like that. So the, the showings are picking up. So if you're thinking about selling, you know, it's not as bad as you might think, and it's definitely not as bad as it was maybe two months ago, make sure you speak to the agent that you're working with about how they're handling virtual showings and making sure the people who are coming into your house are approved and you know solid, real serious buyers. Number of pending sales. So this is a year, this is week over week, excuse me, in the month of April for the areas that we work. As you can see, pending sales is trending up. So you know it was lower in the beginning of the month and uh, just like the graph shows, more showings, typically leads to more pending sales. So that's kind of what we're seeing towards the end of the month here. Sale, uh, number of new homes going under contract has gone up. Now price reductions, this is an interesting one. So it's a little bit too early, I think, to really see if this is gonna be a trend. We'll have to check next week and to see if this continues, but in, this is year over year. So the same time last year, at the beginning of the month, we were down 25% as far as the number of people who were reducing their price and that has increased. So as the month go has gone on, you've seen more price reductions compared to where we were the same time last year. My opinion is that if you know, price reductions are happening and people are snapping up the homes, buyers are buying them, there's gonna be an equilibrium again. So hopefully we should not be seeing a huge amount of price reductions. If buyers are buying the properties, that should stabilize it. And that seems to be what's happening. Homes are going under contract. So we'll see what happens next week if this comes down and, and equalizes. Um, so here's our analysis. Supply and demand are roughly equal. So like we discussed, uh, if supply comes down and demand comes down at the same percentage, which they are, then there shouldn't be a huge downward uh, swing in prices. So. So far, we have not really seen that. We're seeing price reductions, but it's a little too early to see what the final sales price is gonna be on a lot of these properties, so that's to be determined, but I don't think we're gonna be seeing huge decreases just based on uh, the supply and demand numbers that we're looking at. Showings are picking up again, so if you were thinking about buying a property, or excuse me, if you were thinking about putting your home on the market and you were one wondering, are people still seeing properties? It's picked up. People are getting more comfortable with what's going on. Pending sales are increasing, so people are writing offers and buying properties still. Uh, total price reductions are increasing. Like I said, it's too early to predict a trend. Um, it's just very important if you're putting your home on the market to price the home correctly and be competitive. Obviously, there's a lot going on in the world. People are losing their jobs, and you know it's, it's not a great time economically for a lot of people. But you want to make sure you're not overpricing your house based on everything going on. You really got to nail in on the price and be very, very competitive. Um, the price reductions could slow down with the sales picking up. So if people are buying houses, sellers don't have to reduce the price. So again, we'll see where this trend goes. Um, the price reductions does not necessarily mean the market is crashing. It just means that sellers have to align their expectations with where they would like the price of the house to be with the market and where buyers are writing offers. So. Uh, you know, again, it's too early to see if this is a, a real trend or not. Stay tuned for next week uh, when we can go over you know, the analysis to see if this continues. So that is it for uh, our This Week in Real Estate for the week of April 26th. If you guys have any questions, feel free to give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. 
I understand this is really trying times and you know, there's a lot of uncertainty with everything going on, especially with real estate, which is typically most people's biggest asset. I'm not here to sell you on anything. I'm just here to consult you and give you the information that you need so you guys can make the most informed decision for you, whether you're buying or selling now, six months from now, six years from now, I, I don't care. I'm not here to sell you. Like I said, if you have any questions, let me know how I can help. All my contact information is below. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it.